Okay. Um, welcome, everybody. I, I forgot to start the recorder for the intro, but um, I can always add that later. So um, thanks for attending this session. And we're going to be talking about discussion protocols over the next 50 minutes. Um, so our agenda here, I'm going to do about a five minute intro to you know what protocols are. And then we're going to do an activity together. We're gonna, um, it's going to be quick because we've only got 50 minutes. So um, we'll spend about 10 minutes on the postcards from the edge activity. And then um, we'll come back together and I'll go over a few other protocols that you might want to use. And then we're going to break into small groups. We'll be using the breakout rooms to break into groups. And within your groups, you're going to select one of the protocols that um, we've discussed and you're going to develop sort of an implementation plan for how you could imagine using it in one of your courses. Um, so after 15 minutes in breakout rooms, we'll come back together and the rooms will report back to the overall group. So that's our agenda for today and um, we're going to try to stick pretty close to those uh, timings. All right, so um, the, the protocols that I'm going to be talking about today come from this book, Going Online with Protocols, New Tools for Teaching and Learning. Um, and it's, it's a quick read. It's, um, if you haven't read it before, you know, it's, it's um, you know, a, a nice practical um, ed tech book that you can use to help you kind of come up with some creative ways to spark discussions in your online courses. These can also be used um, in face-to-face -face or hybrid classes as well. Um, they've been adapted for online um, or hybrid environments, but all of these protocols you know, are very flexible and you can be creative the way you apply them. So, um, so you should be able to use them in a variety of settings. Um, so what are discussion protocols? If you're not familiar with that term, um, basically they're rules or guidelines. So um, the authors of the book just, just uh, define it as prearranged constraints designed to sharpen communication, enhance collective thinking, build knowledge. For example, um, a particular protocol called tuning protocol constrains who speaks when, for how long, um, about what and with what focus. So basically it, it provides a very rigid structure for the discussion to keep people on task and to make them sort of examine things in a way that they might not normally do if they were sort of left to their own devices without a whole lot of guidance. Um, a lot of studies have shown that having some very structured guidelines for your online discussions can really help students um, become more comfortable and facilitate in a way that, um, that builds knowledge and builds uh, understanding of the subject matter. So the first activity that we're going to do together is called Postcards from the Edge. So I figured the best way to kind of um, internalize what a protocol is, is to actually experience one. So I figured that's what we're going to do. We're going to actually all spend about 10 minutes together um, doing this activity. Um, you could do this as an icebreaker in a class. Um, you could do it like maybe the first week of a semester or um, even if it was a hybrid class, um, you know, during the first class session maybe. Um, so there's all kinds of different variations. But the basic premise is that we're um, going to have a collection of images that I've provided in Sakai. And then you're going to choose an image from that collection that speaks to you in some way. Um, and then what I want you to do is write uh, an answer to the question, how does that image relate to your experience with teaching and learning online? So that's what you want to kind of have in mind. And then you'll take a couple minutes to just kind of skim through other people's posts and then put a reflection in there about what you learned about your part fellow participants as a result of this activity. So um, we don't have a lot of time, but I think you'll find it's, it's a pretty quick, easy activity to do. So let me show you how we're gonna complete this. I've got this set up in Sakai. I'm gonna share my screen here to show you. So I'm in the conference site on the page um, where you have the description for the session. Um, let me refresh this here because 
it should be active now. Okay, so under the, the link there for the slides and stuff, you, know, you should see a button that's active now called Postcards from the Edge Activity. And if you click on that, it will take you to a page that describes the activity that I just um, described to you verbally. Um, but I've got here uh, a link to the discussion topic that we'll be using for this activity. And then these are our images. And I just put them here for your convenience so that you can kind of look through all the images in one go and pick which one you want. Um, so, you know, select one that speaks to you for whatever reason you're drawn to it. And, um, and then go to this discussion topic. Click on that, it'll take you over to the discussion area. And you'll see that there's a thread in here for each of the images. And I've, um, I've repeated the image within the message. I just put just the image. Um, what I'd like you to do is then uh, reply to this message with why you chose that particular image and how that image relates to your experience teaching online. So, um, so that's what we're gonna do. And then after you've posted your own, um, item, then what you want to do is, um, let me go, go back here, here, Let's see, and then you can uh, kind of look through some of the other posts. If you refresh your screen, you should see the ones that actually have posts associated with them. And then down here on the reflection area, go ahead and put a reflection, just thoughts that occurred to you as you read maybe the other folks um, postings in the, the site. So I'm going to give you guys 10 minutes to do this activity and it is 11.19 right now, so we're going to um, have until 11.20 to actually complete this. I'm going to stop sharing and, um, and let you guys actually have a moment to, to choose your, your image and compose your response. All right, just a quick time check. You guys should have selected your image and, and be either already posting your res response or have um, just wrapped it up. Um, so if you refresh, you should be able to read um, some of the other messages that are posted from other folks. Um, got about five and a half minutes left in this activity. Okay, so we've got a couple minutes remaining. Um, if you haven't already posted your reflection, please do. And um, I'm going to actually go in there to the reflection forum and see um, what we've got so far as reflections go. Like so far, it's just one. <laughs> Matt Claire posted, but nobody else yet. So please, um, Post something there in the reflection after you've had a chance to look at some of the other um, posts that people have, have made. All right, so I'm going to um, share this real quick. We're not going to dive in too much to read all of them right now, just because we don't have a ton of time, um, but you kind of get the idea how this can be an icebreaker. So one thing that um, jumped out at me right away and just kind of looking at the numbers um, is that image 12 had seven messages. So obviously that particular image uh, resonated with a lot of folks. So this is the one with the sort of doodles and ideas. So, um, that's what I would consider to be kind of a positive image. Um, so that tells me that a lot of the folks that are here today anyway, have um, sort of positive associations with um, teaching and learning online. So I think that's great. Um, let's uh, back to refreshing to see if we have any more reflections. Okay, good. It looks like we've got some more reflections in here. So um, it looks like um, 
a lot of people talked about um, learning not being one size fits all. Um, nobody, whoops, there's my timer, keep me on time. <laughs> Yeah, nobody picked the uh, the explosion one. I thought about doing it like a dumpster fire, but I thought that would be a little too <laughs> negative. Um, so I, you know, you can read through these as you um, as you have time. I'm not going to spend too much time going through all of them, but but you get the idea. It kind of gets people thinking, gets people um, talking about images they might have in common. Maybe you can see other people that. Um, see the same image and see it in a different way or see it in a similar way depending on, on what they post. Um, so that's how the postcards of the, from, from the edge um, activity works. Um, so I'm going to go over a few other protocols as well. Um, and again, all of these are in that book that I mentioned, the Going Online with um, Protocols book. They're all described in more detail in that book. So if you're interested in kind of diving a little deeper or seeing a, a variety of other protocols that are maybe variations on a theme or um, quite a bit different from the, the ones that I chose for today, I couldn't cover too many. Um, so I just wanted to give you a few to choose from. Um, and I realize these slides are a little text heavy, but I kind of wanted to have it on one screen. Uh, just for ease of, of discussing. So um, so another protocol that you might choose to use is um, what's called a hinting game. So this game is um, the, uh, it, it works well as an icebreaker. Um, so you can, you can use it to kind of get people familiar with one another if you're trying to build community in an online class. Um, so the first step is to have students compose profiles that include um, something about their interests, experiences, personal facts, like maybe their major or their hobbies, things like that, but also hint at something um, that they didn't reveal, but they hinted at it in some way. And they could hint at it um, using a, a story, an image, a quote, um, you know, a, a an audio clip, I mean, whatever type of media, whatever type of hint they want to insert in there, um, hinting at something about themselves without coming right, out right to say it. Um, so then the second step is to have students uh, read each other's posts and connect with at least two other students. So two other students in which they have something in common, they would respond to those students based on their common connection and, th and then try to guess what the hint that, that was dropped, um, what was that about? Um, and so then the following um, step, which you would do kind of at the end of the week, if this is over like a week's time span, um, everyone reveals the substance of their hints. So if they were hinting um, by maybe a quote from a favorite author that this is their favorite book, for example, um, or if they had maybe uh, a piece of music that was the soundtrack to a, a movie that they really love, um, you know, or even just something in their nar narrative. They reveal what those are and then um, explain why they chose to present the hint the way that they did. And then um, also during that last part of the activity, you would have students uh, reflect on the experience and kind of debrief on you know, what they learned about themselves, what they learned about their classmates, and if they feel more connected to other folks in the course because they have things in common. Um, so that's one protocol that you might choose to use. Um, another protocol is called believing and doubting. This is um, more geared towards um, you know, getting people to talk and think critically about content in the course. So uh, step one here, you would um, kind of set it up. So the organization phase, the instructor would select a resource. And this could be a text, it could be a video, a podcast, any type of media. And you post it in there with a brief intro of the subject matter, and then create three different topics, one called beliefs, one called doubts, and one called takeaways. And so then at the start of the week, again, this is over a week's time span, um, the start of the week, all students, regardless of whether they actually believe they would need to post in the believing topic, um, that in arguing in support of 
the resource or the, you know, the opinion expressed in the, the subject matter of the resource. And then about halfway through the week, um, they would have to do the same thing, but from the opposite perspective. So they, everyone in the class, again, regardless of their what they believe or not, they would have to post a, in the doubts topic um, some sort of response that opposes the resource or questions it in some way. And then um, finally, at the end of the week, in the takeaways topic, students would kind of review their own posts, review what other people in the class have posted, and then post what they really think now in the takeaways topic. So they kind of get to express their own opinion as opposed to taking a side pro or con. Um, and hopefully they've expanded their knowledge uh, through that exercise. So that's the believing and doubting protocol. And then finally, um, there's the replay resource rehearse protocol. And I know the text is a little bit small here, but I have it larger for you in another um, format. So you'll have a better, uh, better way to view it. <laughs> um, so the first step for this is replay. So this is, um, you can be a little creative with this. Um, this lends itself really well to different types of multimedia um, or performance art even. Um, so the presenter would recount a personal experience that he or she would like to reconstruct. And this could be anything, really. It could be a written narrative, like a short story. It could be a video, um, maybe something that they, they filmed or something they filmed themselves doing, like performing um, a dance recital or, you know, um, playing something on the guitar um, or some other artifact, maybe even a piece of software that they wrote. Um, and they could include some focus questions for participants on, you know, what they would like to improve. Um, and then the participants in step two have a chance to ask clarifying questions, see what the presenter, um, you know, if, if they're not clear about anything in the presentation. And then in step three, participants go away and find resources that they think would help the presenter reconstruct their performance, their experience. So they might have um, other videos or articles or images or um, other resources of any sort um, that would be helpful in kind of refining the original uh, construct. And then um, in step four, the presenter, the original presenter reviews all the resources that they've um, been given from the participants in the, the exercise. And as step five, they provide a reconstructed version of the initial experience. And this could be in any format. So, um, you know, they could uh, maybe do like if it were a video, for example, maybe they could do like a video with commentary and just sort of comment on things they, they might change. Um, or it could be like a second draft of something. Um, or they could just talk about how they might have done it differently if they'd used some of those resources um, to begin with. Um, and then finally, there's a reflection, just like most of these have at the end, where all participants reflect on the rehearsal and how, how did it change? Even if the, the artifact itself wasn't changed, but maybe their perception of it has. Um, so kind of think about um, how that changed as a result of gathering those resources and if any new questions have surfaced in the process. So all of those are some different um, things that you might try in your courses. And what I'd like you to do now is that we're going to do a small group activity um, called Protocols in Practice, and we're going to break out into breakout rooms. So I'm going to put you guys into breakout rooms, and we're going to go to um, a web uh, shared spreadsheet. Let me paste it in here to, in the chat. This is a link to the, the spreadsheet, and it has all the, the four protocols, postcards from the edge, hinting game, believing and doubting, and replay, resource rehearse. They're all in the spreadsheet. Um, so I've got that in like the first tab, and then there's tabs for each group. And I'm going to make um, several groups. Let's see, we've got 34 people. Um, and we'll, we'll do... We'll do five rooms. That should be okay. Um, so let me go ahead and make the breakout rooms. So I'm going to do five rooms and I'm going to give you guys 15 minutes 
in your rooms. So let me go ahead and I'm going to randomly assign you guys. So here I'm creating room. You should get a, um, a little invitation to join. Go ahead and accept that and the breakout room will, will open up in a new tab. Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, to our final activity for today's workshop. Um, what I'd like to do is have um, some of the groups report back on some of the ideas that you came up with in your group. So um, we're running just a smidge short on time. We've got about six minutes left. Um, so if you would like to, to volunteer to report from your group, just try to keep it to, you know, a minute or so, um, so we have enough time for everyone to go. Uh, but would somebody from group one like to give us a quick summary of what your group did, which protocol you chose? Feel free to come on the microphone, or um, if you don't have a microphone, you can type into the chat. I see Dave typing. Uh, maybe while he's typing, if somebody else who does have a microphone, just to jump in there. I'm not going to call on you because I don't know who's got their mics out, given which groups you're in. Um, why don't you come on the, the mic and, and tell the rest of, the, of us uh, what your group um, came up with. Martin, why don't you go from group five? Which means I have to speak for the group, sorry. Um, <laughs> we, we had Kathleen and myself, uh, Nikki, Paul, and Robin in our group. We chose the hinting game and a, a nice conversation about ways to use it and a, a, a sort of a good tension between would it be better to do this in forums or would it be better to do this in student pages in the lessons tool? And there are some pros and cons to both, one having to do with the ease of adding uh, media, audio and video and so forth, and the other about keeping the thread of, of uh, if, if it's important that the hint be back and forth. And then as we got so rudely interrupted by the being called back to the main room, um, <laughs> we there was some talk about how you could start with this as sort of a low stakes thing, introducing each other, but you could move on to higher stakes things like even designing tests, um, you know, practice tests and that sort of thing. So it was a it was a good conversation. Well, good, good. Sounds like it was productive. So thank you, Martin, for sharing. Um, I see Dave typed into the chat. Uh, we selected the replay resource rehearse protocol. Um, Dave, I don't know if you have a microphone um, or if you'd like to just maybe type more into the chat or if anyone from your group has a mic and would like to comment on uh, what you guys came up with? Any more typing? <laughs> He's had mic issues most of the morning. Oh boy, hopefully it works. Um, you get it worked out before the afternoon because you're doing a workshop. <laughs> All right. How about somebody else from one of the other? I can go. We had we were in group two. This is okay. Patty. Patty. Um, we also chose the replay resource rehearse, and um, I do a lot of graduate nursing courses, and I'm an instructional designer. So um, the scenario we came up with was, um, and actually it was uh, Kent, Alyssa, and Danny and I, and we could see it uh, applying to a discussion where nurses, nurses go on clinicals, so they go out in the field and obviously they ex have experiences and they could bring a, an experience back that they had perhaps 
to the group to see, you know, this is the way I handled it and I'm not sure I handled it the right way, whatever the scenario happened to be. And then the fellow nurses could, you know, use step two to ask questions like how old was the um, patient, what was their state of mind, um, things like that. And then um, you could work through the steps that way. And I think that would really, really give all, it would help um, bring the group to a cohesiveness and that they would all be sharing their um, experience, their personal experiences as they worked out in the field. And a lot of times they don't learn from each other from that. There's just not time. And so they could really use the discussions for that. That's a great example. Thank you for sharing that. I think that's, that's a really nice way to incorporate those clinicals and kind of real life experiences and prepare for future scenarios that might be similar. So great, great example. Um, well, we are just about out of time, so I'm not going to um, call on anybody else. I know lots of folks were doing uh, chat anyway. So um, hopefully um, you have a chance to go back and look in the spreadsheet. You can look and see what other notes people may have jotted down in the other groups. Feel free to, to go check that out um, if you'd like to see what other groups came up with. And, um, and documented. And uh, hopefully you guys got something out of this workshop and you'll be able to uh, try something new in the upcoming semester. So thank you all very much for attending. And um, next is our lunch break. So hopefully you'll join us for trivia in about 10 minutes during the lunch. <laughs>